Hi, my name's Dave Kretschmar. I'm the director of education for the Kinnicksu Land Trust, and uh, this is my craft corner at home. I teach a after-school class called Wild Crafting, uh, teaching kids how to use their hands and materials in nature, how to make things. And since I can't do that in person now, it's going to have to be done online. So. I'll give you a quick tour of the craft corner and then we'll get to work on some birch bark weaving. So, uh, there's always things in progress. Here's some bark tanned uh, boots that my wife Susie's working on. Um, there's a par flesh container. There's always uh, different uh, skulls and animal feet. There's, um, there's a lot of animal skins and furs. All these are collected um, as roadkill, skulls, different things found um, in the forest. There's a moose and an elk and a deer. There's some more exotic things, an ostrich egg. People give us a bunch of uh, plaster casts made of tracks. That's a wolf track from Yellowstone. Uh, this whole thing is just full of different things of baskets made or um, whoop, uh, mead horns made out of uh, horns of cows, wood carvings, um, cedar carvings. There's all sorts of projects in progress. Books, pack basket I just finished with some bark tan straps. Anyways, that's a quick tour. Uh, on the table here, I'm just going to show you a few things woven out of birch bark. Um, this is going to be the craft today, is weaving birch bark um, to make either a knife sheath or a tool sheath of some kind. You can see down in the middle, there's all different sizes. You could make them um, for knives. And, you know, if you have a knife in mind, it's good to have it with you so that you can um, choose the size of your starting pieces, whether you want to make a small knife sheath or a larger one. This one I alternated the inside and outside so that it got a bit of a different look rather than putting all on the outside. And today I'm going to work to make a sheath. Uh, that fits this bigger knife, or rather for this sheath to go inside, um, something like that. They're also good for um, putting in uh, pruning. So, like this. So you can make one for your couple sacketeers in England, but to fit your pruners. And then you can also put um, a belt loop on them so they fit on your belt. So, um, I actually just went out and grabbed a log off the wood pile. Didn't actually look for anything special, just grabbed a birch log and it, um, split it down one side and peeled the bark off. And then on the inside, you'll find little bits like this. And, uh, you know, you can take a, a chisel or even a butter knife and just kind of work those off. Birch bark really works best when it's. Um, Everything's wet, so um, this has been soaking for a couple hours. Um, this, there's a few other things you can do with birch bark. You can obviously make some baskets. You can use the same thing I'm going to teach you today to make bigger baskets, or I attempted a uh, arrow quiver. This is um, there's a, a number of people groups in the world that use birch bark. Um, the Sami up in northern um, Norway and Sweden and Finland and then all over Siberia a lot of uh, birch bark work has been done over the centuries this is kind of based after a Sami quiver same thing uh, instead of starting with two strips going each way this one started with five strips going each direction and then moving up so you get a piece of birch bark it helps if um, you know, you peel off a fairly good sized log so that you're getting strips that are at least, I would say, let's see if we can measure them to see. That's 12 inches there, plus another six. That's 18 inches. That's probably 
about the minimum you would want to do up to 2024 is nice if you're, if you're doing um, bigger things. Then you're going to want to cut all your strips the same width. So for me, I'm going to cut them about an inch because I'm making it for a bigger uh, knife. If you were going to do it for a smaller knife, you would probably want to do something around half inch, maybe three quarters. And then the straighter you can cut these, the better. You can draw with pencil if you want. Um, really sharp uh, garden clippers are nice for this. Scissors tend to be a little tough to use on this stuff. So you cut your strips, try and cut it as straight as you can, don't have to be laser straight. And then you're going to stick it in a bucket of water and let it soak for a little bit. You're going to come across knot holes like this where um, it's not usable, so you can just cut that off and then start immediately after. Generally, when I'm out in the forest looking for birch bark, I tend to look for um, birch bark that's a little uh, younger. I don't cut birch bark off of living trees, which I know some people do. Um, I feel like those First Nations tribes that still practice that, that's part of their cultural tradition, but that there's plenty of good birch bark out there just laying on the ground. So, I'll cut that off. I'm not going to use that piece. Now I've got a nice straight line. I've got a piece that's peeling off on the back. I'm just going to peel that off. So now I'm going to cut another roughly inch wide piece. As you can see, I'm not measuring everything. I'm just kind of going along. And I'll stop the video here because it's basically just repetition. I'm going to cut four strips, just as usual. You're going to do all these sheets right here. This one, this one, this one, this one. These are all made with four strips of birch bark. So you're going to need four strips. Um, if you didn't know already, birch bark is an amazing substance. You've probably all heard of birch bark canoes being made, which if you've never seen one in person, they're well worth searching out to look at. But um, birch bark has been used for far more than canoes. They've made footwear, clothing, baskets, um, all sorts of wonderful decorative things. Um, there's a birch bark museum you can look up in Siberia that's got amazing things in it. Um, Really, the the uses of it are amazing. Often, when you find um, a log that's fallen in the forest, a birch log, the actual tree will have rotted away on the inside, and the bark will still be um, whole and intact on the inside. So you can cut a section to just shallowly with a knife or a pair of pruners, and then shake it really hard, and all the wood will come out, leaving you a nice cylinder of birch bark, which you can then cut and open up into a big sheet. Often I do that in the forest and clean it all and leave the forest with a whole big stack of birch bark all laid out flat. And then, you know, keep for years like that. Sometimes um, birch bark will have a little bit of, uh, maybe you might not like the color on the outside or maybe a bit grimy or have some mold. Well, it's amazing stuff. You just use your fingernail and um, start a little peel and you can peel it off layer by layer just like this and you'll get little pieces that stay attached like this little one here you just have to work with your fingernail it comes right off and then on the inside you have really cool stuff generally when I'm looking for birch bark I try and find one with less of these big horizontal slashes in them they can crack so if you can find pieces that have smaller slashes or without these big ones um, as I said today, I just grabbed whatever was on the wood pile. Um, but the lesser of those big ones, the better. Um, and you can kind of just play around with the birch bark peeling off. You don't want to peel off too much because that will weaken the overall uh, structure. But the next thing you want to do is you want to find the middle and you want to gently start to fold them. If you don't hear a crack, that's a good sign. At any time, as you're weaving, if things start to feel dry, you're going to put them back in the water. Go make yourself a cup of tea or coffee. Soon, you should have four strips. 
all folded in the middle, like so. So I, as you can see, I peeled this one, I peeled this one, I peeled this one. I'm going to peel this one so they all look uniform. Starting at the top, just reach find a little gap. And then it should just peel pretty easily. Um, this, if you didn't already know, is the best fire starter out there in the forest. If ever you need to start a fire, peel the birch bark until it's real flimsy like that. And then peel it further into little strips like this. Crumble it all up into a nice ball. Stick that underneath your tinder, and it will light even when wet. It's got a flammable oil in it. Um, in fact, this right here is birch bark oil. You can see right there on the top. And uh, you make that by filling a coffee can with as much birch bark as you can stuff in there and then burying it in the ground with a hole in the bottom of the coffee can and another container, a little uh, mason jar underneath to catch the oil as it drips out and then you build a fire on top of it and it heats all that bark and it comes out as this thick black oil which is actually a waterproofing agent so you can use it to waterproof things. Um, Finish stripping this one up, and then we will be ready for some weaving. Now, uh, birch bark again comes in all kinds of thicknesses, so you want it um, not to be too flimsy that it just feels like it's going to break on you, but not too thick either. This is probably right on the boundary, it feels pretty thick. Obviously, some of these other sheaths, this one's a really and a thin, flimsy one, probably not going to last all that long. This one feels a little bit more thick. This one's already lasted three years. So, a friend of mine has one that he said is he's had for ten years. So, all right. So before you begin, another good thing to have is a few clips like this uh, to hold things in place. But basically, you're going to start by taking your four pieces. And you're going to have two of them side by side like this. And then you're going to take a third one. And it's going to insert going the opposite direction. So that you're going to have a V. Now, we need to weave a little bit. So, this one here, it's going this direction. It goes over top of this one, so it needs to go underneath this one. Over, under, over, under. Always, always. So, now we've got that in place. We need to actually, you can actually, if you want, to hold things. You don't have to at this stage because it's not that complicated, but you can put a clip on. You're going to flip it over and look at the back side and see what's going on back here. So we can see this one here, uh, it's going this way, it goes under there, so now it needs to go over this one. So you're going to be constantly flipping back and forth between these guys from one side to the other. So now you have that woven. Flip it over, check your work, and once we have a few more woven, I'll show you an easy way to check that everything is going right. All right. Whenever you do this, you want to snug things up really tight to each other so that everything is uh, stays really firm together. Now you're going to take your last piece, and since this one started out over, we know that the one beside it has got to go underneath. So it's going to go underneath, and then it's going to go over. Let's see that? So just work one side at a time. Don't really worry about the, the other side until you get the first side right. So now if we look at that, Snug everything down. You've got these two. This one's going over. The one beside it's starting out under. And then this piece here, over, under, over, under. So that looks good. Let's flip it over. Now on the back side, you can see this one here. He started out under. Now he just needs to go over that one. Often when you flip it over, there's just one move to do on the back. So now... 
and you've got a nice little square and you've got all your nice V. You can check that you're doing it right by just opening it up gently and seeing if there's a hollow space in the middle, which is eventually where your tool is going to go. If for some reason you've done it wrong, you might have wove it together. It won't open up. So every now and then just check to make sure. Sometimes people like to put something inside there. Um, you could put a piece of wood or whatever in there just to hold it um, so that you can know that it's... Oh, I like to just weave it like this. Okay, that's the setup. Now we're going to get to the complicated stuff. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start with this weaver here. Now, it's gone... Uh, pull that off so you can see. It went under this one, over this one, over this one here. So now this one needs to go underneath something, and that something is actually um, the piece that's going to come from the back and fold to the front. So this piece from the back is going to come around and fold next to these guys on the front. And I'm just going to pinch it down. And so this one is going to go underneath that one and fold to the back. I might have said that wrong. It went over something. It needs to go under something now. So that under is this guy here. He comes around from the back. And now you can see we've got this piece that's going this way went under, then over. Now it went under this one. Before we flip around to the back, we can see that this guy needs to come underneath here for it to be over, under, over, under. This is the type of craft that requires some hand dexterity and some patience. And if you find the birch bark resisting you, use some clips. So now I've got that side done right. I'm going to flip it over to the back side and just have a look. And on the back side, we can see this piece is coming from under there, and he's going over there, so it looks like everything is great on the back side. Over, under, over, under. I'm going to turn that over. We're back on the front side. Now, since I did a fold over on the right side, I'm going to do a fold over here on the left side. So if we look at this piece on the left, he's going over, under, so he needs to go over something, so that over something is again the piece coming from the back. It's going to fold to the front, parallel. So always now, as you move up the sheath, you're going to be doing these folds to the front and back, and then weaving. So this one's going to fold to the back, parallel to its friend. And before I flip around to the back, I'm going to look at it and decide what needs to be weaved. So this one comes from under there, goes over, so that's right. Now it just needs to go under this one right here. Squeeze everything tight together. As you go, the tighter you can make things, the better. Alright, now I'm going to flip it over. Get some much work. Flip it over to the back. And if I look at the back, everything looks good except for this piece needs to be woven. It goes under, over, so it needs to go under this one. Sorry, I gotta leave it under there first. So this one goes over. It needs to go under this one first. And then over that next one. Over, under, over, under, fold, and then go over, under. Just taking your time to do everything tight. Squeeze it all down. Every now and then you can check to make sure that the middle is still hollow so they can accept whatever your tool is going to be. Um, take your time. Keep doing that weave. I'll stop the video now until we get to the end, because it's pretty much just the same thing over and over and over again. Okay, we're back. Um, you can use this same technique to make very small sheaths as well. Just cut smaller pieces. Again, just four of them. longer the better. Um, this one I use a mixture of birch bark and cedar 
This is just to hold a little bone tool that I use for weaving. But you can make small ones. You can also use it uh, for, this is a cedar belt I, uh, made out of the inner bark of cedar. It uses the same technique as for the sheath. Um, pretty nice. The cedar just didn't hold up so well in the end just to the where the buckle went in and out, but uh, a lot of fun making it. Okay, so you finish your weave as high as you want it or as high as the bark will reach. Now you need to do something for the top. Um, and so what I do is find a nice um, piece of birch bark that I like and I hold it around and you really want to stretch it tight because otherwise it'll just kind of look funny and be loose. So stretch it tight so it's really tight around there and make a few little marks either with a pen or where that lines up. Okay, now if you don't have one of these tools that I'm about to show you, you could use an awl or something. It's nice if you have one of these, it's called a leather punch, but a very useful tool. They only cost about $12, $15, used for a lot of crafts. You can rotate the head so it has different size holes. So now I'm going to punch some holes in here to sew these two together. Line them up again on your marks. Don't poke the holes too close to the edges as you will rip through the bark when you're sewing. So, you can make um, kind of cool shapes as you sew these two together. So, I use a bit of an hourglass figure usually. So, I'll show you once I'm done punching what that looks like. Again, if you don't have one of these, you could use a small nail, put this birch bark on a piece of wood and nail through it. But there you go. I go ahead and I do three across the bottom, three across the top, one in the middle. And I'll sew that up and show you what that looks like. So, I took a piece of leather and just sewed out and in, out and in, out and in, out and in. It makes a nice little hourglass figure. Um, I sewed it off of the sheath and then slid it up into place. Now I'm ready to finish. So what I need to do to finish is I need to cut all of these pieces off. So what I want to do is I want to position the top of my sheath in place. And I'm going to take a pencil. I'm just going to scribe along the tops of all of these. You can see I'm just making pencil marks. Right where I want to cut it. Then I can just slide this thing down a little bit. Take my clippers, and you can see the pencil mark right there. Just gonna slowly line it up. And cut it. And I'm gonna do the same to all the rest. Take your time, take a break whenever you need one, don't get frustrated. And just remember if this is your first one, anytime you do something for the first time, it's usually a good just a learn. Don't expect to be perfect. So, once you've trimmed them all, now you can squeeze your sheet together. Remember, you wanted to make this top bit tight so that it's kind of difficult to get on that way it looks good and it holds things in place when we do the next step so slide it back to the top double check your work again got a nice hollow down there for the knife or whatever tool you're making to slide in there so it looks pretty done but we need some way of securing the top um, edge and so if you look at some of these old ones Piece of leather that's coming off on that one. Um, 
you'll see we'll poke some holes all around the top and then sew through the top and through the inner pieces as well. You can, see all there. You can also add a, a, a strap for a belt. I made that one out of um, birch bark. You can also do it um, out of leather or whatever you have on hand. So now I'm going to punch some holes again. Stand pretty far back from the edge just to make sure I don't bust through. And again, this this tool right here is very handy for this. If you didn't have one of these, it would be quite a bit more difficult. You don't need to do them so close together. You just basically want to hold everything in place. And since the top of the sheaf you know, it gets a lot of wear just from the knife or the tool going in and out. It's good to have it properly secured. And you can see I'm just poking holes around. And then the last step will be to sew it all together. As I'll show you here. Um, as I was saying, I use, you know, tan buckskin thong, but uh, a good alternative is a thing called artificial sinew. You can buy a big spool of it um, for fairly cheap. Um, and that's a good strong um, thread to use for crafts where you want a little more uh, staying power, a little more strength. So, as you can see, I'm just literally going... Um, around over the top from the inside to the outside. See the holes that are already punched. And I'm just going to keep doing that. Um, as far as locating good birch bark, um, yeah, the longer the birch bark sits on the ground, the more it'll start to crack and weather and turn kind of grayish. Um, you'll start to recognize what is a good piece of birch bark on the ground as you go out hunting for it um, and as you start to craft with it but generally yeah, if it's not so uh, covered in mold or uh, growth it kind of looks like it's not been down for more than a year or so but it lasts for a long time um, on the ground so don't feel like you have to cut it off of living trees I mean some people who do that want like the most pristine birch bark in the spring, you know, when the sap's flowing, but uh, to me that seems like a waste to girdle a tree, and um, unless it's part of your cultural tradition, and then who am I to say anything about that? So, find some birch bark out in the woods, clean it up a little bit, Cut it into some strips, soak it for a little while, and then start experimenting with weaving. As you can see from this sheath, it's going to be quite a big one with those inch-wide strips. Um, so probably for mo most of you, you're going to want to start with strips that are about half inch wide. They're a little easier to manipulate anyways um, than the big ones. The big ones tend to require a little more force to maneuver into place. and. You might want to give your hands some time to adjust. Um, yeah, I'm not someone who's been doing this my whole life. I just started five or six years ago learning how to do any kind of crafts. Um, and I found that really it's just a matter of continuing on and not giving up and doing things over and over again. And your fingers just get better over time. And, manipulation of materials and weaving and all sorts of things. So, I'm back around to the beginning. I might just, let's see, do I want to sew through? Yeah, I'll sew back through the first hole again, just to double it up. Um, I don't know if some of you noticed the needle I was using. This is called an S needle. They actually use it um, in hospitals and veterinarians use it as well, which is where I got my first one because my wife's a vet tech. But 
their cutting needle. They're quite handy when sewing with leather or sewing through thick things. They're also very good at poking yourself in the fingers and causing yourself to bleed. So you got to be a little careful when you use them, but uh, probably the best place to find those is online. So now I'm just going to sew back around to the back, or rather through, and tie this thing off. Grab a hold of the needle. There we go. And we're just about done. Um, I've experimented a little bit with preserving these sheaths. I mean, naturally, they're pretty durable and strong, just the oil in the bark and just... Um, but I have tried a little bit with coating them with a little bit of beeswax. And so the way you do that is you melt some beeswax and um, with a brush and brush it all over your sheath and um, then you stick it on a piece of tin foil or in an old you know aluminum pie plate in the oven and on low heat maybe 200 degrees you um, stick the sheath in there that's already been brushed with the beeswax and that beeswax will then absorb into the bark and it gives it kind of a nice finish sheen and a little bit of extra protection so I'm ready to cut that off. And there we have it. Birch bark sheath. You can see it's got a nice big opening there. Um, sometimes there's little bits to trim off. So now I've got this knife, which had a sheath which I didn't really like. I can just slide it, and hopefully. Now it's got the protection of that old sheath on the inside. The knife fits nicely down in there for a little bit of a nicer decorative thing. And I can just add a belt loop on there and there we go. Hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, stay tuned for some more wild crafting in the future.